First game of the tie break between Vidit Gujarati and Yan Nepom Nishi. Vidit has the white pieces. The classical segment ended in two draws. Now, the first game Vidit has the white pieces opens with one e4. Yan goes for his e5 customary line, the Petrov defense, super solid, and Vidit takes. Now, in the first classical game, Vidit did get an advantage with the white pieces facing Yan's Petrov. But Nepo has prepared this opening so well for his World Championship matches that he's ready to give it another go. We are in the mainline territory. Bishop comes out. Both sides devil up. It's time to castle. Vidit castles. So does Nepo. And here, the move that was played by Vidit last time in the first classical game was c4. He plays it once again. c6. And queen c2 was played with h6 was Nepo's answer and here with it deviates with the move rook e1 and Nepo remembers his preparation goes bishop to h5 look at the time on the clock for both the players 26 minutes for with it 26 minutes 18 seconds for Nepo queen comes out to c2 and now Nepo takes a bit of time and goes knight a6 now the knight is angling to come to b4 so with it instantly stops it with his pawn coming up nepo now brings his bishop back very solid in the center and with it decides to push this is a risky decision because somewhere you want to keep the tension but you've released it and nepo went to b8 so that his knight could use the c7 square with it brings his knight out now the pressure on e4 is quite a lot and nepo sort of fixes the knight in the center with the move f5 the knight comes back with it is aiming at this square to put his knight it's also looking at the weakened e6 square to fork so knight comes to c7 at least controlling the e6 square with it goes to knight f4 bishop e8 the idea could be to start pushing your kingside pawns the knight jumps into the center this is a very interesting position but look at the way in which both sides are making their moves they are so well prepared this is already move number 17 with it goes 92 nepo brings his knight out to e6 and now what does with it do can he push the knight away yes he plays it and now nepo if he saves his knight then he loses the game because his pawn is hanging but that was never the intention he actually sacrifices a piece and goes queen to f6 now pawn takes pawn takes you can't really save the bishop, it's trapped. Also, there's a threat of queen f2 and mate coming up. So, with it, plays his knight back, attacks the queen and defends the square. Queen moves away and with it, gives up his bishop because it was already trapped there on d3. 5th, 25 minutes for with it, 26 minutes for Yan. He takes with the queen. Queen takes. It's actually a battle between two really prepared opponents. Who's going to flinch first? With it now thinking for a bit, but he still looks like in his preparation because he still has 24 minutes and Nepo is also in his prep. He's moving cool towards 27 minutes there. And we are on move number 23. Insane prep. With it now takes the pawn, allowing black to fork. Nepo goes in and forks the pieces. Bishop comes out. And now you can take this rook or you can take this one. He takes on e1. And I think you must take back with the with the rook. He takes back with the idea of giving a check. And the bishop coming here, it could be a dangerous attack. So Nepo finds the best move. He pushes his pawn to h5. And now with it, jumps in with the knight, giving a check. So the thing is, if the king comes up to g7 or h7, it's fine. He finds it. He plays king g7 because king h8 was a blunder it was knight g5 followed by bishop c3 so he plays king here knight here if you take this 96 check is losing because there's a discovered check from the bishop so that's the reason why nepo finds king g6 now nepo is out of his prep so until move 28 with it was in his prep no he's also in his prep on move 29 whoa with its preparation is unbelievable now there are some problems you still can't take here because of 96 check so Nepo goes bishop f4. The problem, oh, he gives a check. Now you can't interpose with the rook because after take, take, bishop f4, white is better. So he has to actually take the knight. But what is with its idea after that? He's on move number 30. He takes 
and with it is he still in his prep he still has 24 minutes is he two pieces down g3 what a move this is if bishop takes h4 is a mate you can see there nepo a little bit worried is it mate there is a move h4 which is perhaps the best but he goes for the second best move bishop g6 and i think this is where with its prep kind of comes to an end rook takes f4 and we reach a position which is round about even king takes h6 now and with it pushes the pawn forward he's a pawn up he's going to recover his piece here because it is pinned nepo is ready to go into a king and pawn endgame which is interesting but with it doesn't need to take instantly because anyway the king is pinned so he can actually move up he goes king f2 and now only move for black is to play king g5 but what a preparation that was from with it 30 plus moves while nepo was also prepared for move 27 28 by the way if you take here here this is a drawn king and pawn endgame so with it takes with the pawn nepo takes back and i think if you want to try still for a win you need to play your rook down to e7 with it plays his rook to e7 nepo gives a check yes maybe you're going to lose a pawn as uh, black but you will have enough activity because your king is well placed you have a pawn here your rook can enter nepo now has to figure out what to do he's losing his pawn here on b7 so he goes rook f5 cool move if you take here i want to take here if you take here i want to give a check and i want to win this pawn which would be a draw so that's the reason why with it goes b4 nepo plays his pawn up to b6 and now it's uh close to a draw because if with it takes on a7 he takes on c5 he therefore with it takes on b6 pawn takes on b6 and maybe the right move now is rook e6 yes he plays rook e6 and the important point is that rook f6 could be met with h4 which, which is still a draw but he goes rook d5 nepo is uh, very confident about his position even if he loses a pawn check here now if you come up i'll give a check and pick up this pawn so that's the reason why you may want to come down to the last rank so he goes king g1 rook d1 check and now with it has to move maybe they can agree to a draw with uh, perpetual checks but i believe with it may want to try for a win he, he could go king e3 but then there's rook takes h2 rook b6 and check and you lose this pawn with a draw so king f1 played and now nepo um, plays rook a2 that's the safe way to do it he will be still a pawn down but he will have it under control rook takes a3 rook goes to e6 and now rook to b6 played rook to b3 played sorry the pawn is attacked with it comes back defends the pawn but nepo says look your pawn's not going forward your king is anyway cut off here and i'm going to constantly give you checks so that's what he does and it's pretty clear that white cannot win this it's going to end in a draw and what an amazing game this was both players repeating now and i think they're going to accept a draw with it just making a final assessment of whether he has any chances goes up again they look at each other shake hands it's a draw unbelievable prep by both sides with it did test nepo but he was right up to the mark and the first game ends in a draw